Nothing in the Detroit Lions hard knocks was fake. People are excited for, for our team in a different way, like a real excitement, almost like something to build, like we can believe in something. Passion is reciprocated too, because it, it starts with the coaches, it goes from top down, they're passionate, and it translates to the fans as well. The Lions finally, finally have competent leaders within the organization. Because it's about the team. So another thing we have to get into is Hard Knocks because we are fresh off of Hard Knocks. It was this Tuesday. And I do got to ask the question, DMAC, in terms of national perception of the Detroit Lions, and, and Spence, you could put up RG3's tweet, and you're seeing it right now. RG tweets, the Lions will gain fans from Hard Knocks and gain wins on the field too. Sneaky good offense with, say, Brown, Hawkinson, Chark, two good running backs, and Jamison joining later in the year. Aiden Hutchinson will rise to the level of the defense and make a lot of O-linemen his son this year that is a statement from rg3 respected analysts in the nfl what do you think dmac no I, I like where his head's at you know it, it obviously doesn't mean wins or losses but it, just the attitude the culture i think raj nailed it when we're talking about it, you know him being a beat writer and being down at comerica park and having no energy mm -hmm. around the tigers and then you go to you know what does that say i wanted to touch on that a little bit what does it say about training camp you know what like that's that's and that's what i'd love but the passion of the fans in this city is that Sheila signing autographs out there because they appreciate, they see the effort. So they're, the fans will give her her flowers when she deserves them and they see what she's putting in place. It doesn't mean wins or losses, but when you hear a guy who's respected, a guy who's played between the lines, mm -hmm. the biggest thing that resonates, and it was said by Aaron Glenn when he was talking about Dan Campbell, the coach, is that he's genuine because guys can see through it. Players can see through if you fake or you're BS. You know, sometimes in the past hard knocks, maybe, you know, we've watched at Cleveland or the Colts or, you know, like uh, Hugh Jackson comes up, uh, the, the coach. But nothing, nothing in the Detroit Lions hard knocks was faked. Nothing wasn't no. genuine. Even from the coach telling his linebacker coach uh, not to cut his hair because that's not who he was, right? So guys can see through it. And I think former players and analysts and guys who are around, I can see through it. I love the vibe. Raj tells you going down to camp, you could feel the vibe. It's real. It's real. Doesn't resonate in the wins and losses, mm -hmm. but it doesn't hurt. No. Just like the fact of drinking the drinking the Kool-Aid. I love that Braylon brought in the Kool-Aid. Yeah, it's sip it up, bro. They drank it all. There was none left today. But uh, you know, because it doesn't hurt you either, right? To drink the Kool-Aid in the offseason because they got to go out and perform. But I think it's the attitude and the mentality of what what we heard to what we saw keeps us engaged and I think people are excited for for our team in a different way like a real excitement almost like something to build like we can believe in something and it's okay and I get it why a lot of people are shell-shocked because of the history but I mean I, I've learned long enough in my 50 years is to trust my feelings about what's real and what's not mm -hmm. and and you know I pride myself on being a genuine person and what's coming out of there is genuine and it makes you want because at the end of the day right here's again and i know i do a lot of lines uh tigers comparisons but everybody in that lines locker room of the 100 guys even at training camp guys who aren't going to make the team guys who are undrafted they feel a part of it that's saying something because there's 20 some guys in that tiger locker room that are disconnected af yeah, and you talk about passion. I think passion is reciprocated, too, because it, it starts with the coaches. It goes from top down. They're passionate, and it translates to the fans as well. The real, they see the that The real passion, passion Jeff. Mm -hmm. The real passion. What have we been force-fed here, especially with our football in the past? We've been served that BS of what we're going to do. We, we've gone from, oh, hey, I I got the championship, so here I come. It's my way to the highway. I know better than you, right? And that's not what it is. That doesn't work here. What works here is, hey, you know what? I'm going to, oh, you need that bolt tightened on the line? Dude, yeah, I know I'm the coach. I'm going to go do it. Oh, I'm going to get in there with, with my guys. It doesn't matter what needs to be done. The job needs to be done because it's about the team. And I see the comments coming in. Casey says, that's the Lions life fan cycle, or the fan life cycle. Drink the Kool-Aid from April draft until September, then October to March, SOL. See, I, I just don't agree, and I'll tell you why. I think my perception of the Detroit Lions is changing because the Lions finally, finally 
have competent leaders within the organization. That's where it is. It starts it's from the top bottom. But it, it starts from the top, and at the top is laid off and put the people in charge, mm -hmm. right? And the Brad Holmes, who's got his generals and stuff, to Dan Campbell, who's shown you, hey, here's the coach, here's the coach, here's the former player, former player, former player. Guys, so not only do you have the former players and guys that are in there and teaching guys about the dog and about being in the fight and whatever like that. So what did I, t yesterday I went through like in the military, you know, a lot of the, the missions that are flown, you don't know if they're real or they're not if you're the pilot, cause you gotta do the mission, do the mission, do the mission. You know, they don't tell you if it's real or it's not. So you, so you it, everything's real, yeah. right? To the, to the point, that's nature. the mentality, the practice day after day. That's why they're hitting now, the pads. That's the mentality this, and they believe in it. Right? That's the one thing is that doesn't matter what narrative is spoken from the top or from the leadership. It's whether that the soldiers believe in it. And, and that's what we're, we have right there. So doesn't mean wins or losses, but I like where we're at. And especially considering the Lions have been a, a laughing stock, to say the least, the last 30 years, it's almost like the little brother thing around the league. It's like, hey, we want our little brother to succeed. A lot of even other opposing fan bases are looking at the Lions like, hey, this is the year. These guys can not this year, but this is the regime. This is the time for the Lions to take that next step. But Spencer, I want to ask you, man. How much will hard knocks affect the national perception? Yeah, I think it. I think it'll help a lot. You know, you always see the the little darling of the year, and hard knocks plays a big factor into that. But talking about like you saying other fan bases wanting the Lions to succeed, it's true. Like my my roommate from MSU moved to uh, San Diego, and mm -hmm. he's he's been a lot of, around a lot of Rams fans, a lot of Chargers fans, a lot of Raiders fans, and. None of them dislike the Lions. They actually like the Lions because, you know, for the past 15, 20 years, if the Lions are on the schedule, it's a win. So they, they all like the Lions. The only fan base that, like, doesn't like the Lions outside of the Packers and Bears is the Cardinals because the Cardinals never beat us. So they're That's the true. only team that doesn't like us. But everybody else, they like us. They want us to win. And I think Hard Knocks, you know, having that kind of – energy in your face seeing Dan Campbell I see all the national pundits tweeting like damn it I actually like Dan Campbell <laughs> and stuff <laughs> yeah, like they that got me. yeah and they have to so I think it'll do a lot that doesn't you know our next segment we'll get into a little bit more about what that actually means but I think it is changing a little bit of the perception of the Lions nationally and don't get me wrong like I would love the Lions to be hated because if you're if you're hated you're good that's period. You don't you don't Facts. love great teams. They're not there yet. But they're not there yet. That's, they will be. They will be. And, and Sam Flannel, a guy, hey, listen, you'll tell it to me straight, Sam. Is the national perception changing for the Detroit Lions? I think it has to because, unfortunately, before now, national media, NFL fans from around the country, they've never gotten a look into the Lions. All they see is the worst organization in NFL history. But the good news is they're, they're getting their introduction to the Lions at, I believe, the perfect time. It starts with like competent leadership like Brad Holmes. And also getting a look at the coaching staff, getting a look at how they relate to their players. And that's what really stood out to me. And I think that's what an N average NFL fan will really get out of this and really like. And also, they didn't even mention, like seeing a guy like Aiden Hutchinson, the first the first round draft pick, the number two overall draft pick, he is practicing hard. He looked good, and that just shows that the coaches are getting the best out of out of him. And mm -hmm. Aiden Hutchinson is, you know, being that sponge, being that quick learner. And that is all really good science. And I think that all is very, very relatable to the average NFL fan. And the fact that it's the Lions, I mean, it's not something we're used to, but it's awesome. Yeah, no, it's good Good people within the organization. And Rack says in the chat, guys, I work out here in California. They always talk to me about Detroit sports and how they wish they'd all be good again. Mm -hmm. What do no, you think, D-Mac, when you well, first hear that? Think about it. Detroit's, you know, four major sports team. You need a good not Detroit, too many like it's it. It's all good. Yeah. You know, that, that all of them, it'd be, it'll be nice when three of them are good again at the same time. No, that's, so. what, that's what we're striving for. And certainly, um, and you could see with this hard knocks, I mean, national media rooting for the Detroit Lions, it's kind of like that connection you get with the team before the well, season. Well, here's a good point brought up too, right? If, you, uh, you know, if you're a fan of Pat McAfee's, which I am, and stuff like this, is that he's, he's throwing it out there to his fan base that Dan's Detroit's the – And, and I'm, uh, Motor City Dan Campbell, Detroit's the new America's team. Mm -hmm. Right, so that there is gonna put eyes, right? Put eyes from from his followers to different things towards this team or to the hard knocks. I think, I think they do have an they have a, an opportunity to sort of 
uh, in the next few years be America's sweetheart. You know what I'm saying? Come from worse because everybody will be because they haven't won. So how can you not root for a team that hasn't won, right? It's it's the same thing if they if they get good unless they're against your team, right? They'll be, the, it'll be nice when the Detroit Lions turn to other team other other people's favorite team's second team, right? We're the ones Lions fans. We gotta always have a second team. Yeah, always. You know what I'm saying? Is and we're gonna be some other people's second team. And I think that there is, and I bet you after all of this hard knocks is done, there's this appreciation for what they got going there. And I think you're gonna see not only the national media that we watch every Sunday and stuff like that from the Foxes and the ESPNs and stuff, but just this could be the tie that's changed. But again, what are we talking about? We're talking about the passion and the culture that changes it because we haven't even talked about wins or losses. No. When we, you know, the bigger picture. that'll come down to it, right? You can't, like Dan Campbell said, you can't start 0 3 or 0 4 and, and do the same old lying record stuff because mm-hmm. then the rest of it don't mean crap. And you're, you're spot on. Ethan Brown said the chat. I like what MCDC said. This is all nice, but we have to win. If we go 0 and 3 to start, I'm and going the to self-awareness get. Self awareness is there. And, you, and yeah. the thing is, is that he says it, I believe he believes it. And he knows it. And that's why they're in pads as early as they are. And see, the biggest thing, what I loved about that. Is he, not that he had to explain himself, but he gave the reason why. He treated them like adults. Mm-hmm. Right? He, he knew he they were thinking. He treated them like it. men, right? But what are the rules? Don't be late. Respect your teammate. You know, pretty simple stuff. I didn't yeah, hear make curfew. The way. I didn't hear, you know, no, no shade of hands going to be signing McCarty's name on a hockey stick or, you know, you uh, pass curfew. That's not even, they don't even have curfew. Yeah, and then that's why when you get to the 40 up-downs, it all kind of makes sense. No matter how frustrating it is, they see the bigger picture. And that passionate speech Dan Campbell gave in Hard Knocks was certainly something special.